Good afternoon, everybody. As uh, most of you know, I'm sure I'm Kevin Williams. I'm the representative of Callan Books at this year's CATR, and I'd like to start off by offering uh, Jen and Graham and the whole team that's put this great conference on. Uh, congratulations on doing uh, a really, really splendid job. I've been enjoying myself greatly. And uh, yeah. I warned Jen that uh, she was in danger of setting the bar too high, and maybe nobody else would uh, want to come to the table, but she said, no, no, it'll be fine. So today we're here to launch a brand new Talon publication, hot off the press, as people like to say, King Arthur's Knight and Peter Pansies by Dial McNeil and Marcus uh, Yosef. And uh, Marcus, I know you all know, he's the director of the New World, artistic director of New World Theatre and uh, the 2017 winner of the Simovich Award. So, yeah. <laughs> Whenever we get a prize out on the West Coast, us West Coasters, woo, trying to tip the balance out there. And uh, now McNeil has been, <laughs> no, not a chance, has been involved with theater from an early age through his long association with the Caravan Farm Theater. He performed uh, as a youngster in Romeo and Juliet and Bull by the Horns and Strange Medicine. In 2011, Leaky Heaven and New World Theater co-produced Peter Panties, a play written by McNeil and Marcus Yosef, which was performed in the Vancouver Push Festival and won a Jesse Richardson Critics Award for Innovation in Theater. And uh, McNeil loves researching uh, new ideas, writing music, writing plays, and performing. He's got a number of plays in the works right now and has a really aggressive schedule planned for himself <laughs> over the next couple of years. And so without further ado, I'd like to present uh, Niall and Assistant Director to uh, Marcus. I'd like to uh, turn it over to Niall and Marcus. They're going to do a piece uh, called Writing Together. It's an introduction to how they put together King Arthur's Knight and Peter Panties. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin, thank you very, very much. Yes, thank you. Before we start, um, just uh, to clarify, Niall wanted me to say that he is the assistant finder of New World Theatre. That's uh, his official title, so just so everybody knows. That's, yes, there we go. Big applause. Um, it's been a source of some contention, your, your, the title, over the years, but we've, uh, I think we've settled on it. Um, so thanks so much for being here. Um, Kevin gave us a pretty good uh, introduction. Do you want to take your mic? Hey. Wow. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, we're thrilled to be here uh, uh, on, on, on this territory, which was so beautifully talked about um, uh, in, the, in the last uh, panel. Um, and Niall and I, when we do these kinds of things, what we often do is ask folks, you know, it would be great if it's possible to get just a teeny bit more light on the audience. Uh, if that's a hassle, don't worry about it. But if it's possible, that would be great. Is um, to do at the beginning what we always do when we work together, um, thank you, um, which is uh, a little bit of a warm up together. Because uh, something people have talked about in the previous panel today was like about coming present together and being in the space and the room together. And that's really important, I think, in the work we do. So, what do you think? Should we do a little warm up? Right. Are you guys ready for action? <laughs> okay. okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's hit it. No, no, there's no music. Sorry, I didn't have music for the warm up. Oh, okay. No, it's all right. We don't need the music, but we can just. Uh... Good, good thinking. <laughs> I went to school at UBC. I, I learned all the moves, too, so bear with me. Um, Marcus can explain what I'm doing. So I'll ask everybody to stand up. Yes. It's good for academics to, you know, get out of the chair. Okay, sorry. Shouldn't make academic jokes. Just, okay. just make sure you guys wear up. Our friend Bob Jack is taking uh, a photo and video of us. So let's just move our feet. Moving the feet. And just move your shoulders, too. Shoulders, too. Just, just pretend there's music in here. Just pretend. <laughs> just pretend it. That's my fault that there isn't. <laughs> so generally, yeah, the, yeah, there we go. Somebody was snapping. You can do that. And sometimes you can snap fingers. So generally, we, we sort of focus on following Niall because he's got some sweet moves. That's why I learned them from uh, University of UBC. 
side like, to side. Side by side. I, I, I could, but that would yeah, ruin it. Yeah, but he didn't say that much. <laughs> so, it's your old uh, moonwalk. Oh, moonwalk. Like Michael Jackson. It. Moonwalk. <laughs> and that's it. That's our warm up for today. Excellent. Thank High you very seat. much, everybody. <laughs> nice job, uh, Niall. Um, so, yeah, this is writing together a brief introduction to our collaboration uh, over the years. Um, and well, Kevin sort of mentioned this, but uh, this story begins uh, uh, many years ago um, with that guy. Yeah, um, let me explain. I didn't uh, write everything down. It's um, I'm going there uh, this summer. It's, my name is Naya Patrick McNeil M McNulty, and I'm six years old at the production of Romeo and Juliet. Right, Romeo and Juliet. And where, where is that happening, that production? What do you mean? Like, where was this? It's at Caravan Farm Theater, which is, I can show you the bag. Oh, nice. Right here. Are yeah. people familiar with the Caravan Farm Theater? Who's not? Stick up your hand if you're Who's not. Who's not? Who's so not? There's quite a few people, so maybe tell them just a, a bit about the caravan. Here's oh, another picture from the caravan. The, okay, the, the caravan. You can see, it's we did a 350 people came to see in, anyone. Everyone, that was a show um, there, that's right. Um, an audience is from Salmon Arm or far away, far away. I just stay in the, the hotels and tear the place up. Now, the caravan has 85, 80 anchor farm. It's an 80 acre farm in the interior of BC. It is an outside, outside from Armstrong, BC, which is uh, go to elementary school for a long time ago. And that photo. Which one are you talking about? This one? The next one? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, this one. Okay. So there's many, many places you can befo uh, perform. Uh, we do l locations. That one's from, not really Estelle, more like from Jennifer Byrne. She's a playwright, she's a poet, and she likes theater a lot. That's right. And so there's shows uh, all summer. There's shows, um, uh, winter shows, Christmas show. Uh, there's also sometimes a Halloween show. And that's where uh, Niall and grew so up. And sometimes there are sleigh rides, too. That's right, it's awesome sleigh rides. Um, there's Niall with Colin Heath. The Cirque du Soleil actor and uh, playwright. What's, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, he's a Cirque du Soleil um, actor, playwright, and he's my son. That's right. Now, has a very complicated uh, filial genealogy. How's that for academic but, talk? But it's true. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm his brother in law, just so if folks know. Um, so, that's sort of where Niall like, kind of came from. Um, and, you know, as Niall already said, he's a professional actor and a playwright, and his whole life, Nye, you wanted to write an adaptation of Peter Pan, something you, you talked about a lot with folks at the caravan. And in 2009, Lois Anderson, who at the time was co-artistic director of Leaky Heaven with Stephen Hill uh, in Vancouver, approached me and asked me if I'd be into considering the two of us working together to fi figure out how we might write an adaptation of Peter Pan uh, together. And I was really, really excited about that idea, just to finish the thought for a second. Um, a, because Niall and I have been in shows together and you're, we were friends, but also because I've often worked in collaboration with people writing, and this felt like a really exciting uh, opportunity for me to see, to, to figure out a process that we could work together. And also, Peter Pan is a story um, about a boy who can't grow up, who won't grow up. He, he, well, the actual story is from J.J. Uh, Barry. J.M. Barry, right. And, and uh, what he said is he'd never, ever be a boy. He never wants to go up because he just want to have a little boy and have fun. That's right. And that seemed like a really provocative and interesting idea to me. And I also knew how well, Niall, you knew the story. Um, and so I was really excited about that. And we got lucky. It was Olympic. Sorry, go ahead. No, I know you like to talk. But I, I do I, like to I talk. Just, I just do, uh, mind you. Um, I, make a, I make a joke once with my half-dad. Um, I said, I said, I said, no, it's Peter Panties. 
That's so right. So that's why market is seen as Peter Pan, but roughly is it as Peter Panties. Right. No, that's right. That, yeah, that's the title you you wanted um, who, who to have. Lo who, who loves Peter Panties? Who likes the title Peter Panties? Okay. Yeah. Good. It's good. Our demograph, our our focus grouping is working really well here. Um, um, we got lucky. It was the Olympics time, and so they were dumping money off the back of the cultural funding truck. <laughs> and we got a very large grant that allowed Niall to and I to spend two years figuring out how to write together. Um, and working also with Stephen and Lois, who co-directed the show, and the cast, workshopping material, developing material. It's one of the most exciting times uh, of my life. That's an early uh, promo shot of us. Um, it, it looks like a... It looks like a, a prison photo, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell this is partly improvised. Um, that's funny. Um, yes, I agree. It does. Um, that's very funny. Um, I'm looking very serious. Sometimes I can make funny jokes, but in that photo, I don't think we should laugh and make fun of. <laughs> I like it because I feel like it's both serious and funny. That's why I like that photo. Um, the, re the result of, of that collaboration, as Kevin alluded to, and as we've talked about, was the show Peter Panties at the 2011 Push Festival. Um, here, uh, and over the course of this, we're going to kind of go from process to, to product and to showing you stuff. But, um, but here's some stills, again, directed by Stephen Hill and Lois Anderson. Uh, it was at the Kulch, some pictures. The show. That's when... Um Sasha and Sasha Brown. She's uh, she got married to Steven Drover. Uh, maybe you can explain about that later. Not now. Yeah, that's sort of their personal life kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in that show, Wendy actually there's a balloon. Oh, you want to show that picture? Yes, Wendy gets pregnant in our Peter Pan. And, and it looks like Jamie's born. Uh, born uh, they did a tube. And you cannot see, you cannot see Alan Zinnick. He's un. Uh, what's not going there? Oh, so that's okay. No, Alan's underneath. So, well, we'll show you the scene, and then we'll explain it afterwards because we have it. One of my favorite moments when we started writing Nye, when I started going, "Oh, right, like you're you're a brilliant uh, associator and somebody who who can riff and improvise." Uh, ideas in a way that I find really exciting was when you you and I were talking and you were like and you were like and and we just sort of jam and stuff and you were like yeah and then Peter uh, Peter says I really want to have sex with you Wendy yeah and then I was like oh right and then what happens and you were my like my favorite word yeah <laughs> <laughs> um anyway we'll show you a bit of the uh, show you a bit of the uh, that the birth scene from. Um, And um, the, there's we. I wrote the how do I have but you guys. Well, in this one is Niall McNeil and Wendy got married. Yeah, and it's a great thing because Niall, you weren't really in Peter Panties much. You played Banquo's ghost because <laughs> Banquo appears. Um, but um, hey, you got somebody uh, excited. Somebody excited. Yeah, that's John Lazarus. He get he gets excited. It's not his fault. Um, um, but then at the end, you came out and you got to get married to Wendy, which I thought was awesome. Like that, that it did. You just Banquo's ghost suddenly got to get married to Wendy. Um, uh, one of the um, one of the most one of the first things that happened, and I, when you and I were working together, was you looked at me, and I'll never forget this. You looked at me and you went, "This is a song," and I went, "Oh, okay." And I record and transcribe everything that we that we when we hang out and write together. Um, and you just spoke these lyrics, um, and I just wrote them down. And I remember I sent them to Veda Hilly, uh, a really terrific uh, Vancouver musician who's our, our composed the music and songs for out of Niall's lyrics set for all the shows, both shows. Um, and she was like, "This is." She likes working with verbatim material, and she was like, "This is the most exciting verbatim material I've come across." Um, and uh, uh, just to give you a sense of that, uh, we're just going to share with you. Uh, uh, one of the songs from from Peter Panties. 
Um, this is called uh, Mr. Darling Macbeth. Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> we managed. To, we managed to make make a song about your favorite joke, which is telling telling people to shut up. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and for me, that that song, like so many of the songs, uh, captures your ability to shift gears from one moment to the other. Like how brilliant. Like Mr. Darling works in a bank, right? Um, for me, what you said about Mr. Darling. Uh, not com refusing to come out of his room because he's so worried that his children are going to starve, said more to me, in a way, about um, well, about that character than any other um, uh, uh, version of it I'd ever seen, it was, uh, Yeah, which I loved. Yeah, um, I don't know why I put the uh, bad words in shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think it's that bad a word. No, it's not really a bad word. Yeah. But I love the lyrics. I I am five-time play writer and lyrics, uh, forty-time lyric writer. Right, absolutely. Um, so after uh, Peter Panties, um, uh, three things, significant things happen. Uh, the first was that Niall, you were like, I wanted to work on another show, and that was because these are big shows, and I'm you know I'm the artistic director, and it's a lot of work to raise the amount of money necessary to make these happen, and I was kind of like, uh, uh. Okay, maybe, and we started kind of writing what? Marcus. <laughs> Niall. Um, <laughs> um, and um, at the same time, I started to think to myself and talking with my colleague, Jamie Long, um, who Niall wanted to, to direct the show um, at the time. Um, and I went, well, hang on. When I have success with colleagues, almost inevitably the next thing I do is work with them again. Why is it any different in this case? And so, we started hanging out writing together, and now I wanted to do a King Arthur adaptation. The second thing that happened was um, about like literally a week before Peter Panties opened, I went, oh my god, I think I was probably talking to Joan, Niall's mom, who's here. I think she probably even was the one who said it. Um, and I went, oh my god, like the Down Syndrome community, how come we haven't, talked, we haven't talked to the Down Syndrome community, which is nuts, right? And so we managed to communicate with uh, the executive director of the Down Syndrome Research Foundation in Burnaby, and she managed to get to the show at the last minute. Her name is? Don McKenna, and afterwards she invited me in, and she said, "You know, this is uh, it, this is for me a really profound example of inclusion, and so if you do ever do anything again, please um, consider partnering with us." And the third thing that happened was um, 
uh, Jamie and I, Jamie Long and I were in Toronto doing our show Winners and Losers, and the artistic director of the Luminato Festival there would like the show and invited us in. And said, what are you guys working on together? And we said, well, we're working on King Arthur with Nile. And that led to uh, a commission from the Luminato Festival, uh, for a significant amount of money, kind of like the Olympics money, without which there was absolutely no way we would have ever been able to, to actually get to work on this. Um, and this, that we got to work on. It's King Arthur's Night from, we travel from the uh, workshops in Alberta. Right, at Banff, we did workshops, and that's right. Yeah, we do Banff, and I'm the lead, and everybody's the lead. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I might say that. Yeah. And uh, my job is to re memorize my lines. Not by sign language, but I can really sing like that, kneel my lines down, or tell them the sign language too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had been told there was going to be an audio describer for this, actually. That makes me s cat, anyway. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, you're back there. Oh, okay, that's why. Hi, cat. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. Um, uh, um, yes, exactly. So we got to work on, on King Arthur's Night, and here's a, here's a few stills from the show. Anything you want to say? That's my dear friend, Anton Federowski. Oh, sorry. You know what? They can't see this one. It's a bit confusing. They can only see this one. So that's what they're that's looking at. Okay. Yeah. That's me, and uh, that's me and Tiffany King. We playing our characters, and she is. Um, you you might see her dance later, and I'm not afraid on stage. And the rest of the characters are awesome. Right on. I admire that, that you're not afraid. I get it. I'm in the show, too. I play, I play Merlin. It doesn't have enough lines, in my view, but... Um, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> they like it. I know. <laughs> I was just making a cheap joke, but it's true, too. Um, there, now they can see that one. Nye. Okay. So that's Nikki Bickman. As did David Peterson's partner um, from Studio 58. That's Anton for the for the for the. Go ahead. Lipovetsky, Anton Lipovetsky. That's right. Uh, he's playing the role of Mordred. Mordred, who is um, who uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's the King Arthur's enemy. Yep. And then there's uh, three more. There's Bailey Mankansky. And that's oh, no, they're looking at that so one. So, one, one, that's Anton and Matthew. So, Matthew, it's a Down syndrome. Um, and Nicky Lickman. Again, yeah. And then there you go. There's Lancelot and Guinevere. And that's Tiffany and Billy McCansky. Uh, Tiffany plays Guinevere. So, the cast is intersectional. So, we worked in partnership with the Down syndrome Research Foundation. Um, and we'll talk about this in a second, but they, uh, so there's four actors, including Niall, whose lives include Down syndrome in the show, and then uh, seven uh, uh, neurotypical professionals on stage. So it's a completely integrated um, ensemble. Um, and the show, uh, other than a line or two, there's a line King Arthur says, who he tells Lancelot not to kiss Guinevere because she has Down syndrome, and that's inappropriate, um, which is a great moment. Um, uh, and Lancelot's like, well, he kisses her anyway. Um, but uh, um, the show is not about uh, disability. It's the King Arthur. It's Niall's vision of King Arthur. Like, there's no. It's not about anybody having Down syndrome. So um, there's. Is that, is that me? And it's you. I love that one. Yeah, so I sad. I'm so sad because I, I think our loss of war. You lost the war. It's um, Mordred. Yeah. The Saxon. Yeah, and there's the evil, our big evil Saxon. That's Andrew Star, Andrew Star Gordon. He's in Special Olympics. Yeah, that's right. He does Special Olympics. And Matthew. Matthew Tom Green. Right. Again, who plays Marjorie's assistant. And then once again. And that's me as the war, uh, uh, King Arthur's war, against Saxon and Mordred. That's right. And so, because of Don's interest, and I think also, like, we, you know, we'd, we'd made Peter Panties, and the question I had, and the question we 
and I convinced you it was, it was a good idea, you weren't so enthusiastic at first, um, but was to see, does this model that we've developed of working together, which we'll show you ex excerpts of in a bit, like, can it be extended? Is this just because Nye grew up in the, at the caravan and has been in theater his whole life and knows more about theater, frankly, than anybody I know, honestly? Um, or is it a model that we've developed that can actually um, um, uh, widen the, the reach? And so Niall and me and Jamie and Veda started teaching classes at the Down Syndrome Research Foundation. And that's where, yeah. The location is at Sperling Avenue. It's on Sperling in Burnaby, that's right. In Burnaby. And I go there for age colleges for after school care. Um, the teacher is Mrs. Duran Stratton, and I've been doing, been there for a number of years, and she wants me to go to UBC Yifu City. Right, cool. Um, and we wanted to see, um, also like, um, does this way of working where we, Niall and I have figured out a way of working. Uh, mean that we can also like, that it can be truly intersectional. So that one, it's not always the same people leading and not always the same people following. Um, and so here's an example um, um, of some early process. Like oh, this is, not, sorry, you can boost this. This is actually, sorry, this is Niall and I writing. This is text is good, I think. Yeah, the comment is how we are going to do. Yeah, that's that. I sent it to her. Oh, you did it already? Yeah. Hang on, here's the song. The way of the storm, no more season. Oh, certainly the happy hour is evil. The gray hour comes gentle. Okay, that, I really like these lyrics. Um, um, it's it's no, that's against the power song. Exactly, I think it's totally related to the power song, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I would agree with you, like, because it's the grail journey. It, it's a grail journey because the queen's in it, right? What do you mean? Because the queen is on a, on, on, on a horse the first song. Okay, hang on, the queen's on the full horse for the first song? Yeah. Yeah. And she go, she, the whole journey is about her. Yeah. Going to the power. Is about her going to the power? Yeah. And then let's do the, the power song. And the power song, which I think this grail bit here is really good for. Yeah. That, the, that's at my house. Um, what I'm saying is uh, we're trying to find a grail. Uh, I think it's the the ghost of a grail, the grail is not gonna return. And so this model, which that's really just Niall and I working, how we work, like we just hang out and we talk and we have ideas and uh, I record everything and then go back and and uh, transcribe and organize it. We brought into the workshops that we did at the Down Syndrome Research Foundation, where we met the three actors who we asked to join our company. Um, and this is a video of one of the very early sessions. Uh, that we did, and I said, for me, a really good example of what happens if we're in a room working together and we just try to pay attention and follow uh, something that occurs um, uh, in, in a way that, you know, we, we wouldn't necessarily if we weren't trying really hard to listen. I'm a
actually <clears throat> teach um, people have a disability, like Andrew, Tiffany, Matthew, and me, and some of our colleagues. Um, we teach them what is theater. We teach them what is uh, games, and and we the, after that the DSMF, and now they're professionals. And and also my experience is that like Andrew taught us something there with that thing that he started doing that is actually uh, a bit in the show like that made it in the show it's which I never would have been able yeah, to think of. It's more like uh, it's paint out the a baby goat. Yeah, when the, there's a whole thing that happens with this baby goat, anyway. Um, uh, um, bad, uh, it's bad experiments of goat. That's right. Because <laughs> my, mom's, my mom feeds goats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a whole bit in the sh a story in the show that we don't have time to explain, well, but no, anyway. No, not um, this is another example of uh, the following, or uh, what's next? No, so this is a, um, a, a video. So the next stage was to take that work we were doing at the DSRF and then bring it into the professional rehearsal room with a fully integrated with all our professional, neurotypical professional actors. Um, and that was, f um, that was fascinating. Because we found, what we found is that all the things that we, that, that we did in the um, DSRF classes, uh, circles at, at the beginning, the a warm up Nile always led, like we did today, dancing, that, we ha that doing all those things made working all of us together possible and fun, it also, in my experience, made the entire rehearsal room better, more attentive, um, more present. Uh, we learned that some people, uh, for the whole company to learn, that some people actually need two minutes to answer a question, and that you just wait. And if you're willing to wait, they'll answer. It was way better than trying to explain how to be inclusive. Sorry? It's crucified. It's crucified? No, no. Oh. Um, like Matthew, can Matthew. He, he goes like this. Yeah. And he puts his finger around his. Yeah, he always goes like this. But he can't really help it. And that's the way, that's the way he's thinking. That's right. Right? He's, he is so stereotypical. That's right. And he'll always answer. And it's frustrating sometimes to wait. But he always answers. And it's such a dramatic triumph when he does, and it brings us all together, um, which is uh, interesting. Anyway, here's a video uh, from the first workshop, first integrated workshop we did in 2015, I believe. The journey must begin when I open the door and the whole drums and bass kick in. And then I say, So yeah, yeah, that's what we do in workshops. We a lot of energy to be on the floor, and somehow there's drums. Uh, there's a really good drummer. His name is Barry Morachnik. 
and he's a really good drummer. He plays in uh, All Naked, and same with Vida. Vida and I are working on a record. Maybe not right now. We, we're, we're They'll be right, the King Arthur record. We're making the King Arthur record. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, I, the next thing I wanted to show just briefly is um, a, another example from that workshop of, of, um, of what it's meant to us as the neurotypical artistic creators uh, to follow. Um, this is uh, Tiffany, uh, who plays Guinevere. Um, very early on in working with Tiffany, we realized uh, she was an extraordinary dancer. Um, and so our choreographer, Josh, built all the choreographer or choreography for Guinevere's dances or just from her movements and put that on the neurotypical actors. And then Tiff was just allowed to dance however she wanted because that's how Tiff mm -hmm. dances. Uh, yeah, again, um, her, her mother told me and Marcus, um, she likes to dance, she closed the door, and she danced. That's right. For a half an hour or more. She is the extraordinary woman you ever met. And she's really stunning. So, like I said, she is a uh, stoinary. She goes to her room and she dances at least two hours a day. Like, she closes the door, start playing music. She's like fluffing wings, all that kind of stuff. And again, she's staining, stoinary, and being a lot of energy for the next day at the Progress Lab. That's what we do. That's right. Uh, so, as Niall mentioned, uh, last year in the lead-up to our premiere at the Luminato Festival in Toronto, uh, we were very fortunate to have a partnership with the Banff Centre, which allowed us to go to Banff and work for uh, two weeks in, in the theatre, in production. And, and, um, uh, and there were two things about that. One was being able to make the show in, in rehearsal in the theatre. Um, and the second was allowing us as a company of 25 people on the road to learn how to live together. Because <laughs> that's a whole nother thing, right? And some of our actors that never, like, don't travel that much necessarily, and uh, certainly hadn't been on tour before, and all the protocols and all the, like, that stuff is as important, like, how to be together as a community was as important as, the, as working on the show. So we had a great opportunity to, um, to practice that. They also made this extraordinary um, mini doc of our process, which kind of gives you the sense of the next stage of the development of the work, um, which we'll, we'll show now. If culture is to be any use whatsoever, it has to reflect the world that we actually are in, in all its complexity. Culture can bring folks in a room whose experiences may be very different and who may, as in this case, have been honestly historically separated for millennia and challenge that. That's what culture is for. King Arthur's Night is King Arthur's story through Niall McNeil's eyes and vision. Enough! Leave me! As a professional actor, is in shows his whole life growing up. King Arthur's Night is about uh, the kingdom called Camelot. I read it with my co-writer, Marcus Patrick Yosef. This is the second show we've written together. And it's always a question, no matter who you're collaborating with, how are we gonna do this? How's this gonna work? Who's gonna write what? And so Niall and I just started hanging out, and what I did was I recorded absolutely everything. A couple of things came clear from that, that, that I could actually begin to work with the transcriptions of those recordings to shape a script. Another thing that came really clear was there would be times when Niall would just go, hang on, this is a song, and he would just speak a song. And a couple of times out of five, the lyric structure would be extraordinary. I'd show it to Veda and she'd go, I want to write music to this. In that process that we 
began to devise, which we were just making up, we discovered a few things. One, Niall and my pleasure in working and writing and jamming together. Two, Niall's gifts as a writer. Hello, you raised my son. And our ability to do that in relationship to each other in a way that seemed fairly productive. This particular show is real excited interest from a place called the Down Syndrome Research Foundation in Burnaby, BC. Our cast includes three additional actors who we've been working with for three years through the DSRF. Our Guinevere, our Magwitch, who's Mordred's assistant, and our big evil Saxon are all played by actors whose lives include Down Syndrome, as well as a cast of professionals. So when we started the classes at the Down Syndrome Research Foundation, our Guinevere, Tiffany, terrific actor, she and actually Niall were paired up they were doing a Beauty and the Beast adaptation. I saw as they started, Niall just sort of clock Tiff and look at her, and I could see it, I could see it in his eyes going, oh my God, she's really, really good. Tiffany, every time be on stage, she want to be herself. It's the same thing with me. It's Tiffany, it's Tiffany in here, but Guinevere is in here. And she's really good. Huge on Angus Horns. He's very huge. They were huge. It was kind of like funny. Uh, Tiff's mom, uh, Tony Ann, came up to me and she said, she said, you know, this is one of the only of these kind of classes that Tiff has ever wanted to do. And she said, thank God we found you. Because um, Tiff's been doing this alone in her room for 10 or 15 years. So she's trained herself. But one of the things that happens when we open up the access we take for granted is that folks who haven't had that access um, get the opportunity to participate and not just participate as an act of charity or favor, but to come fully present at what they're really good at and make the whole thing better. And that's the real thing about why it's important. It's because it makes our, all of our lives better. We're not doing anybody any favors. We like to do a really good show. It is going to be showed out. I'm not scared. We're ready, we're brave, we're tough, and we can do it. So, it is pretty sad that we're done, but who knows? I don't think we're going to Hong Kong. Well, I don't I think, know. Well, I think we are going to go to Hong Kong, but anyway, um, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I can say that too. Like, everybody's starting to get Terry. Um, <laughs> that's what happens with, um, yeah, well, go, go ahead, Marcus. Okay, well, actually, this is the back on Vamp, but just to, like as a, you know, as we sort of get towards uh, almost the end of the, our presentation, um, just Marcus. that it's not, it's also like, you know, the, the living together thing was really interesting. Like we were at Banff. You want to tell us about that, that spot in Banff, the Banff Center? Uh, Banff Center, I've been there for a second year. And what about that? That's, um, a, a table for all artists to sit and eat. The uh, hard thing is, it's not just Andrew, it's myself and Marcus and Tiff with getting big plates of food. It's buffet. It's buffet. It's all you can eat buffet every day for weeks. And <laughs> Bar Jack. Which is hard for all of us. <laughs> and is also an access issue that we didn't have any idea about. There's a lot of conflict. We had a lot of like, Joan, you remember, like a lot of, it was a lot of intensity and conflict around the food. Like it was intense, right? And you, when you're going, you're going, great, we're going to Banff. Like, and you know, it's just amazing to me the number of times where we've just been like, oh, right, never even considered that. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm gonna say. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, Niall said, um, uh, we might go to Hong Kong, and we're in discussions with another fee, uh, other people. But one of the really interesting things for me about this whole thing, from Peter Panty's through King Arthur's Night, has been like the relationship of like what we experience as a company and as an ensemble, and what the audience experiences, and like how, and that's the the work has been always like in relationship to the actual show. It's been like how can we find a way of dramatically uh, capturing what I experience writing with Niall, what we experience as an ensemble when we work together in the room. Um, that is meaningful to an audience, and I and I think with King Arthur we've gotten we we're, we're getting there we're 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 getting there, um, um, and it's you know it, it feels like it's the same kind of principles like it's about paying attention and just 
treating the show like a sh like any other show. Like it's about making the show as good as possible w in in the context in which all these other things are going on. And to give you a sense of the show a little bit for those who haven't seen it, I know there's some folks here who have. Um, but this is a, 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 a kind of three minute kind of promo uh, that's actually pretty good in terms of giving a sense, I think, of the show and it's what it's like to watch it. Captain, I will sit down at the round to join at the heart. That is what I've come for. You are working in battles for Arthur. Yes, my precious, out in the forest, kissing Lancelot and the Queen. I will one day to the Sir Lancelot, should I trust? Save my people. I will save your people. Do I love you? I don't know. Are you ready, my love? Leave me. This is my anger. I want you out of my sight. Why won't you listen to me? Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Um, very nice of you. I was it's good to have the applause in there. That kind of triggers the audience. It's good. Well, they're clapping for us. That's right. I know. Well, look, every single scene, except for the forest, I was in the forest, and a lot, less rot alone. Yeah. I was not in that mood. That's right. So, I was in it. I was in. It. Every, every, every scene, because I'm not trying to hurt nobody. Um, I am playing the lead, Marcus, and everybody in that show are the lead. The real guy who wrote me and Marcus, I'm the first lead, and everybody saying, yeah, you are. It's just for everybody Yes, you're to definitely share. the lead. There's no question. Like, you are, the, you, are the, you play the lead role. Um, and so we, we do in a bunch of... Uh, other stuff, um, we've made a show that's actually kind of based on this, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious, um, called Niall and Marcus Talk About Shit Niall Likes, um, <laughs> which premiered in, in Vancouver uh, about a month ago and will continue on. It's just us showing pictures of things Niall likes, uh, really. You can say that again. Yeah, I can. Um, and yeah, it's been great because one of the really terrific things about this process is that we've also connected outside of our little theater world and presented it like health conferences and uh, 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 city-led things and uh, various places. So that's been really terrific. Um, and, because we really are getting towards the end, um, now we have a book. Yeah. Yippee! Yeah. Um, 
it, it includes a forward from Al Etmansky, uh, who's a disability activist in Vancouver, really well-known disability activist and the founder of PLAN, um, a disability uh, uh, support uh, organization. Um, his daughter uh, Liz has uh, Down syndrome. Um, and uh, uh, an introduction that Niall and I wrote that kind of talks about our process a lot like this in some ways. Um, I believe it's one of the first publications by a Canadian artist uh, with Down syndrome, certainly not the only, but one of the, one of the, one of the few which we're super proud of. Um, and uh, we're thrilled to be able to kind of launch it here today with you. So we should tell them to buy the book, though, shouldn't we? Buy a book, guys. Yeah. Yeah, there we Come go. on, let's do there, it. There we go. And we'll do questions in a second, but just given the nature of the, the presentation, um, we thought we'd, uh, we'd leave you um, with uh, one more song uh, from our and Veda and Jamie and Stephen and, Na and, uh, and Lois's collaboration. Um, and uh, this song is called uh, Punch a Heart. Punch a heart like them, punch a heart like them, punch a heart like them, put some mama, 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 medicine in it. Punch a heart like them, punch a heart like them, punch a heart like them, put some mama, 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 medicine in it. Mama, 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 medicine in it. Put a hand like this, put a hand like this, put a hand like this, put some mama, 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 Only your doctors go. give you that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's oh, get Kevin you. out here. Oh, oh Kevin. We're going to do questions, though, I think, yeah. for a second. Sorry, no, Ke uh, sorry. sorry Kevin. My we're going to just, I think we're supposed we to ask questions, questions later. But in a second. In a second. In a second. Um, yeah. So I, we have, a, I think, four or five minutes to take questions if yeah. anybody Please. in the audience. I think somebody has a mic back there or around here. Hey, thank you. Um, so yeah, we've got a few short minutes because we don't want to overrun our conference time. Is anybody? Over time. Over time. Anybody have any questions? There's one over there, a couple over here, I think. Well, first of all, thank you. Those look like two very good shows. And uh, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about the dance in uh, King Arthur's Knight and the place that dance had in the rehearsal hall, but also maybe one moment, one of your, maybe one of the moments you found most significant in the show that has dance in it and how that moment came to be, how it was choreographed and everything. Sure, quickly, could we get a bit more light on the audience? We can't really see people. That would be helpful, thank you. Um, uh, dance, well, oh. what do you think about dance in the show? <laughs> Oh, well, the dance Ontario, um, which is is under Josh. Josh Martin is our choreographer from 605 Collective. And somehow uh, do anything what Josh taught us to stay on one spot. Right. There was uh, a, yes, there was a big one spot thing. Absolutely. It's just only for uh, Guinevere to dance. Um, and she looks, go around in circles and... Uh, and so, yeah, so I don't know how to describe your question because Lala Dent is only for Josh, who is a choreographer, and we listen to him so we can bring out, like, you know, 
Guinevere, goats, and all that, and uh, choreographer. And Niall, I think also something you said is actually exactly right, that such, like, the whole idea, like, with Guinevere dancing was just to let, it was actually really interesting, because Josh actually, as a choreographer, had a hard time with it at first. He was trying to impose things on her, and it wasn't working. Like, and I, Niall alluded to it, she was like, she would, he would say, don't turn circles, and she would just keep turning, yeah, exactly, and keep turning circles, just and then they would get into a, a bit of a tussle. <laughs> And Josh had to learn as a newcomer to the process about like it, like you can try to impose your will like all you want, um, and there are you know there's discipline and stuff, but that didn't work, and it actually so he had to actually kind of reframe his um, uh, way of working, and I think he'd agree with me if I said that. Um, to quickly answer your other question about a moment in the show and how it came to be, Andrew Gordon, uh, who plays the Saxon, teaches the goats who are revolting under Mordred against the king to, to battle moves. And that was just because you saw one. You saw it in the early workshop. He was going, rrr, rrr. and so we just followed that. We said, great, you want to be the guy doing that stuff? Great, teach the goats how to, it was Jamie Long. He said, teach the goats how to, um, teach the goats how to, um, uh, uh, to fight. He would fight. do four moves. They were improvised every night. The incredible dancers we have in the show would respond <laughs> to whatever he did. It was all to an improvised drum, like a kind of riffy, really intense drum. And then at the end, he turns around and says, show, or th the last move he does is like just a wild improvised, like, dance. Show me. What? Oh, show, yeah, he goes, sh yeah, he does this wild improvised dance, and then, the, and then the neurotypical dancers have to just approximate it, like, as best they can. Um, and for me, that's a real, another moment in the show that, because it comes straight from, it's, Andrew's doing what he loves to do, so he kills it every night. He just kills it, like, he gets a round of applause at the end of it every night. And he's leading, and we're following. Yeah, uh, he n nailed the, the axe dance. Yeah, totally. Uh, probably we have time for one more question. Sorry to cut it short, but it's, uh, it's just after 2.30. Is anybody on there? Okay, maybe two more, because you're John Lazarus, so. Uh, make it short, John. <laughs> no, no, sorry. I, we're going to go here first, though. You have to wait. You do have to wait your turn. <laughs> Thank you both uh, very much. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you negotiate, if you ever come into artistic conflict, and how do you work through that mm. process? So, um, do do we ever fight? And what do, do we ever fight? And and like about the show, about what? We, yes, we uh, anyway. And how do we how do we how do we deal with that when we when we're disagreeing or fighting? Well, no, not really. But the Arthur doesn't make when Merlin tells the king what to do. Merlin tells the king what to do, or no, the no, king tells Merlin what to do, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. I tell him not to do. Yeah. Which is, when I say, you, know, you, you saw me on a video, I said, leave me. So he did. So, <laughs> in a TV show called Merlin, he said, leave me. And, yeah, I don't know why I said that. Uh, no, we don't fight, we disagree, we agree on what the battle is, uh, how d how we de defeat Saxon. From from my perspective, I would say that yes, we do disagree uh, sometimes for sure, um, and that uh, not we for long. not for long. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that we rely very heavily on our support network too, which includes Niall's mom, Joan, uh, an artist uh, uh, artist support worker who we work with by the name of Lucy Cairns. Um, to my sister, your yes, your sister. Um, I wrote a piece on Spiderweb Show actually uh, called "Honestly Inclusive," which you can look at. Um, it's I think a really good uh, a summary of a, of a time when we were at Banff the first time, and I uh, and and negotiating conflict in a way in which I negotiated conflict very badly, and what I learned from from that. I don't really want to talk about it right here, um, but but it is there to talk about um, uh, because I think it's in a way one of the most interesting aspects of this collaboration. Um, I think a lot of it has also has to do with um, learning, well, and this is a good thing to finish on, I'll get you in there with John, but, but learning, um, one of the things, I think the thing I've learned most about the room that we created and, and in my work with you, Niall, is that all of us are really, really good at some things and really, really shitty at other things. And it, 
And that's just universally true for every single one of us, and it's indisputable in my view, and that part of what we're doing is just trying to come to agreements with each other about what we're really good at and what we're really shitty at. <laughs> and, and that as we do that, things get easier and easier. Language, Marcus. Sorry, language. my apologies. Um, are you okay? Can we talk after? Okay. Thanks very much, everybody. You've been a great audience. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our our book, uh, Kevin is the guy to uh, publish our book. Um, please take a bow, Kevin. Do a wonderful job in the book. Yeah. If it, And thank you for her, too. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I don't really go now, so have fun. Good job, buddy. Good job. See you guys later. <laughs>